How to use the Camera Connect app with the Canon T6i DSLR. The Canon Camera Connect app lets you remotely control the T6i DSLR camera with an iPad or a smartphone. You can remotely view through the camera, focus, and take snapshots. The app connects to the camera with Wi-Fi. This app works with other Canon DSLRs that have Wi-Fi. Download and install the free Canon Connect app from the App Store. Here's how to use the app with an iPad 2. Set the control on the lens to AF for autofocus. And set the camera mode to P. Then turn on the camera by moving the switch to the first position on. Open the LCD screen and push the menu button. Navigate to the seventh icon on the menu. Click the second item from the bottom, which is the Wi-Fi NFC. On this pop-up, click Enable, then click OK. Scroll down to the next item, which is Wi-Fi Function, and click it. On this screen, click this icon, the second icon on the first row of icons, it's a picture of a, a smartphone. Click this, click Connect. On this confirmation page, click OK. You'll get this message that says you are connecting. So now it's time to turn on your iPad. Turn on settings and Wi-Fi and wait until the Canon Wi-Fi appears in the list. Then click it. Verify that you've connected to the Canon Wi-Fi. Then you can click your reset button and open your Canon Connect app. The app opens to this screen. Wait until this icon appears and click it to start remote shooting. This is the app open with the Live View display. Before we go over the display features, we need to go over the options that are available because some of them affect the features on the display. To show the display options, click the camera icon at lower right. Here's what the options do. The first one just turns the Live View display on and off, and of course the rest of the screen will, will uh, remain the same. Lock screen orientation just locks the iPad's automatic rotation feature so that you can rotate the iPad without changing the orientation of the display within the iPad screen. If it's off and you turn the iPad, it may automatically rotate its display to compensate for the iPad being turned. Live view rotation, each time you push it, it rotates the screen 90 degrees to the right. 90 degrees to the right. Upside down. 270 degrees. And the original orientation. Mirror the live view display. If you turn that on, it reverses the display left to right. Live view magnification. If that's on, when you double tap the screen, it will magnify the contents of the focus grid for easy focusing. That's especially useful when we use the manual focusing feature we'll go over later. If live view magnification is turned off, double tapping the screen will not have an effect. The last one, touch AF, if that is on, if you single tap anywhere on the screen, it will move the focus grid to that location and automatically focus. If you leave it turned off, you can tap the screen. It will move the location of the focus grid to that point, but it will not automatically focus. Again, these are the settings I like to use. There are a few other settings available on the screen. Touch the Gear wheel at upper right. The top one show AF button. If it's turned on, it will show that AF button that you click to cause the camera to focus. If you turn that feature off, it will not show that button. 
and you will have to focus using the tap, tap the screen feature. Auto Live View, if that one's on, when you turn the app on, when you start the app after you've connected the Wi-Fi, it will automatically come up showing the Live View. If you leave that off, the screen will come up for the app, but it will not show the Live View. Then you can turn on the Live View by clicking the camera icon, then clicking the top icon on the pop-up. Perform bulb shooting on long tap. I don't use that feature. Bulb shooting in general, if you hold the shutter down on a camera that has bulb shooting and it's set to bulb shooting, the shutter stays open as long as you hold it down. I would think from the wording of that one that if you hold your finger on the shutter button that it will hold the shutter open if the camera has the bulb shooting feature. Let's close the screen, go back to the live view screen. There are some lighting options for the color of the lighting of your scene. If you click the sunburst at lower left, you can consult your camera manual for the meaning of all of those, but there's a setting to adjust the color for incandescent lighting, fluorescent lighting, and cloudy days, sunny days, things like that. I normally have it set on sunny. Press the AF icon to set the type of focusing grid. I like the one that is currently selected, which is the one on the right. It focuses on the center part of the rectangle and adjusts exposure on the entire rectangle. This one's available. Larger rectangle for adjusting exposure and it focuses in the middle rectangle. This one, if there is a face visible in the view, it will automatically bracket the face. It'll put a focus rectangle around the face and keep the face in focus when the face moves around in the scene. I tend to use this focusing grid for most of the time. This adjusts the shutter. It's just, when you push the shutter button on the, in the app, it'll take a single exposure. If you select this one, it'll take multiple exposures bracketed depending on how many exposures you told the camera you want it to take when multiple exposures activated. This is the 10 second shutter release. So if you have that selected and you click the shutter on the app, it'll wait 10 seconds before it takes a picture. That's a two second delay. Click the shutter, it waits two seconds. This one, it waits 10 seconds and then it takes a set of bracketed exposures depending on how many you've told the camera. And you can tell the camera to take anywhere from two to 10 exposures on that bracketed exposure mode. I usually use a single exposure. For manual focusing, click the little bullseye and you can adjust the focus either direction by clicking the arrows and you have a fine, a medium, and a coarse focus adjust. If you click this icon, you can apply exposure compensation to your photos. What that does is it'll make the photos brighter or darker depending on the amount of compensation and which direction. When you click it, you'll get a scale that you can drag back and forth uh, across a pointer to change the amount of compensation. I'm using zero at the moment. Also, you can adjust the equivalent film speed by clicking this option, and then you'll get a scale of film speeds that go all the way up to 12,000 some odd, and you can set the film speed. You can experiment with this feature for instance, if you had your camera on a tripod connected to the app and it was in a low light location, uh, maybe next to an uh, animal den or a feeder or something where the lighting was not very strong, you'd want to boost the equivalent film speed. But again, you'd have to do some trial and error with this to, to see what works for you. In general, the quality of the photos will go down the higher you set the equivalent film speed. There's one more feature I haven't covered yet.
if you push this little down arrowhead, it, it gets rid of the things at the bottom and shifts the picture down slightly. If you select remote live view shooting on the first Camera Connect screen, the camera live view appears. Each time you take a photo, a thumbnail of the latest photo appears at upper right. And you can continue doing that. However, if you click the thumbnail for the latest photo, it switches to showing the latest photo enlarged in the middle, and it also shows the all the photos you've taken since you entered the live view screen at the bottom of the window. And this is what's called the check source images mode. While you're in that mode, you can enlarge any of the pictures you've taken in this session by clicking the thumbnail at the bottom. These are actually different photos. I just didn't move the camera. There's the second photo. There's the first photo. As long as you don't click the thumbnail at upper right, it stays in that mode to let you look at the photos that you've taken. Once you click the thumbnail again, it goes back to live view mode. Another way to return to live view mode when you're viewing the photos is to click the X here. Now we're back in live view mode which I can show you by moving my hand in front of the camera. If you exit this mode, live view mode, back to the previous screen by pushing the left arrow, and then come back to live view by selecting the icon that's on the right of the previous screen, like we got here before, once you do that, these are not available anymore from this screen. The photos are not available anymore from this screen. You can always go back to the previous screen where you do have the option to look at all the photos on the camera. If you do go to the previous screen, and select images on camera, it will show you all the photos that are currently on the camera's memory card and you can select one or more of those photos for further processing by just clicking the one you want. This is not a good photo, but it'll serve our purposes. Once you've selected a photo and it's being displayed, you can change some of the metadata in the, for the photo by clicking one of the icons at the bottom, but you can also transfer it to your phone by clicking this icon here in the middle Once it's transferred to your phone, you can use the photo app on your phone to send it in an email or do whatever else you want to do with it. So you can transfer as many of the photos from the camera as you want, as will fit in your phone, to the photo app. I usually process photos on my computer, not on a phone or iPad. To transfer the photos, I move the camera memory card from the camera to the computer then drag the photos onto the computer desktop or into a folder. I think I've pretty much covered all the features that you'll need to use on the Camera Connect app. If I've missed any or you have questions, don't hesitate to comment on my YouTube video. The videos in this playlist are a how-to guide for using DSLRs. They describe the construction and operation of a DSLR, which accessories are most useful, how to take snapshots and videos with the camera controls and using remote control apps. And they show how to use the Parrot and the Caddy Buddy teleprompters with a DSLR. And most videos show the Canon T1i and T6i DSLRs, but many of the videos apply to other DSLRs. Please note Playlist videos are being created or revised as of October 2021, and more may be added later. Please check the playlist periodically for the changes. To open the playlist, click the link at the end of the video or in the video description. There's also a description of the videos with links on the webpage shown below.
If you enjoyed this Tom's Tech Notes video, please like it and leave a comment. To watch my other videos or to read many computer help articles, please visit my YouTube channel or my website at the URLs shown here. There are links in the video description. When thumbnails appear, click the one at upper left to watch other videos in this playlist. Click at lower left to open the teleprompter playlist of videos describing the types of teleprompters available for DSLRs and showing how to use the Teleprompt Plus app from Bombing Brain Interactive to create and display prompt text. Click my photo to visit the Tom's Tech Notes channel. To subscribe, click the red button. If you don't see the red button, hover over my photo to show it.